Let's go ahead and jump into it. Our next speaker is uh, Ante Lutkas. I've gotten to know Ante actually through the Hacker Channel and then also through Hackaday IO. Uh, an amazing FPGA developer, been building FPGA systems, CPLD systems since 1979. So he's been in the business for quite a while, worked on the very first Xilinx FPGAs, building stuff on the very first series of Xilinx FPGAs. A lot of experience in the FPGA space and somebody who has absolutely warmed my heart as a serious FPGA enthusiast. So, Ante. Ah, okay. Very good. Uh, I'm not talking about my projects here, okay? There are some of them are on the screen. All of them are open source hardware. So all the design files, everything for manufacturing is available from download from GitHub. All of them are FPGA based, FPGA based boards. So I have to now press the tab. And it doesn't work. Let me see. I only have one slide. I want to. <laughs> the tab key. Okay. I only have one slide, so I have to use this what I have on the screen. My talk was about uh, past, present, and future of FPGAs. And if you look at the top left, you see a wave, which is called Makimoto wave, which talks about uh, industry trends in electronics. And if you look on the time scale, you see that the time of FPGAs did end at 2007. And we are now in 2015. So if you're not using FPGAs today, you cannot use them. Oops. You cannot use them in the golden age of FPGA. We are already past that. And the next wave is ending 2017. So it's something that I didn't believe, but all I know about past technology, I cannot deny that this wave actually does exist. It takes some knowledge to understand that these technologies, they did change every 10 years. Uh, this wave is done by Japanese uh, Dr. Makimoto, which is a very big guy in the electronics industry. Okay, so uh, and it's uh, it was used by some presentation as keynote uh, on Xilinx uh, worldwide events of presentation on new technologies. Uh, if FPGAs are in the past wave, the question remains, what is now? If you look on the screen, until 2017, we have the wave which is called system on chip or system in package. So uh, it does include a large processor with very complicated peripherals. It does include processors which include the CPU and the FPGA1 die. Or they may include devices which include the same device is in a single package, so a system in package. The next wave, which should start at 2017, it maybe has a different name, but uh, by the analyst done by Future Horizons, they have called it uh, hyper-flexible super-integration, whatever it does mean. Something is happening, it should happen in 2017 or some days, some years after that. Um, the re it's not defined what it is, but it may be the reason why Intel did buy Altera uh, this year. Uh, I did write, yes, 2015, Intel is buying Altera, and only a few days before the conference, 
So there was the news about Intel having a new technology coming out. It's called a system in, in package technology using an MEP, which is embedded multi die interconnect bridge. Uh, this allows different type of dies to be packaged in same uh, each package with very uh, short delays between the packages and without the high cost of uh, wafer bonding on the through silicon wires. And uh, the first devices which come out will be using Altera. Start extend devices and they will bond memory chips to the FPGA using the high bandwidth memory boost standard. And it's very surprising that this announcement did come so quickly after Intel did buy Altera. So, um, one more thing that can explain that this, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, Xilinx is no longer promoting FPGAs as much as they do, as, as much as they do promote um, system on chip devices. And those are, on this Hackaday project, they think system on chip from Xilinx, on this one, no, I'm sorry, on this one, and on this one, so there were three projects, maybe more. And uh, on the top, I have some minimum and maximum parameters for the FPGAs, which really scale from very low, very small de devices, low power devices to high power devices, and the price range is very large, so it's, it covers very much the large spectrum of uh, different type of electronics things. Um, it seems that like my time is out. You all look so very amazed. But it's, it is amazed. Uh, if I have a few more minutes, yes? Okay. Um, oh, it's... Can you see this? No. I did write uh, four different flows for FPGA design. Flow number A, we take a board which can run Linux. We run open source tool chain. We write, we create two files. First file has three lines of source code. Second line has two lines of code. And then we hit make. And we get this to be running on this FPGA in Linux, compiling and programming the second FPGA on this board. This was flow number one. Flow number two is a Xilinx system design flow. I'm trying to do it very quickly. You start by creating a library, then you create a library component, then you create lots of metadata. You have to say user manual, version number, and lots of other information. Then you package this as an IP core, as a library component. Then you start again, the hardware designer. You put the component onto the canvas. You make some mouse clicks and com connect things. You export it to software tools. You create first bootloader, then it creates a boot file. Then you copy the boot file to a micro SD card or SD card. You plug the SD card to the device and you run it. It was a very short version of the system level design. The third one is a Xilinx tool called SDSOC. In that case, you don't start the hardware tools at all. You just write the C++ code, and you define which part of the code will be running on the hardware. And you create one button make, and it creates everything you need to actually run the code on the ARM processor, and on the FPGA. The fourth flow is a PCI Express accelerators for PCI PCs. In that case, you also write C code 
on PC, which will be running on the add-on card in the FPGA uh, software accelerator. And it, will be, it does use a partial reconfiguration of the FPGA, so the algorithms are translated on the fly and move it to the reprogrammable portion of the FPGA on the fly. That is another reason why Intel did buy Altera to get this stuff to work with uh, Intel uh, CPUs. Uh, 2015 Xilinx did come with the next generation of a system on chip, which does use four times A53 IP cores uh, processors. It does uh, have a SATA 3, uh, uh, USB 3, lots of high speed serial interfaces, and it is something we are getting in a few samples this year. So it costs several thousand pieces, early, early engineering samples. And I'm hoping to make a supercomputer based on the Xilinx Ultra Scale next year. Thank you. For all of you who want to take a look at Auntie's boards, Auntie, if you want to take your boards over there and actually give people an opportunity to take a look at them, he's got some really amazing FPGAs on uh, in a uh, micro SD card form factor uh, FPGA development boards that are absolutely incredible looking. So go ahead and take a look at him. He'll be over there. He'll have a conversation uh, with anybody who has questions, that sort of thing.